On this episode of the ADCC Opens, we have four of the world's best grapplers vying for the 83 kilo title. We have local hero John Combs, new wave athletes Davis Asari and Oliver Taza, and bad boy Elijah Carlton. Michael Sears here with ADCC at the ADCC Denver Open. Oliver Taza, you were the favorite probably in this division at Costa Mesa. Arm drag to the back by Taza. Taza's moving to the legs. We had seven matches last week, so it was a lot of things to look at to adjust, to fix. Um, I had some tough opponents, you know, on the feet, adjusted a lot of things, you know, uh, looking to be more active in certain areas. Taza attacking the legs. He's got the isolation. There's the heel exposure and the bite. Taza hipping in. Front headlock counter to the takedown. Oh, he might have that one. He got it. There's the inversion to the legs. Incredible movement. Classic Oliver Taza. Expose the heel. Third one was a good match, back and forth. Um, um, I got a negative for, for a debatable guard pull. You know, you get a negative. Taza in a battle for his life in this matchup. Almost gets the takedown reversed. Now attacking the head. Oliver Taza, you went down, you got upset. You know, these these opens have guys, I mean, even the guy that beat me, I don't, I can't even tell you his name. He's super tough. At the ADCC Orange County Opens, we witnessed Oliver Taz's unexpected loss, shedding light on the highly competitive nature of the brackets. Today, he fights for his chance at redemption at the Opens in Denver, Colorado. John Combs has been a fixture in the sport for years. College wrestling background, even as a purple belt, he was making waves. For Combs, this level of excellence continued and became his trademark as he progressed through the ranks. John Combs, first off, you're a local around here. Yes, yes. How's it feel to have ADCC do an open tournament in Denver? Oh, it's great, man. It's been fantastic. I spent the day in Boulder yesterday. I got to see my sensei, see all my old friends. It was really heartwarming. You know, it's a beautiful place. I'm really excited to uh, represent uh, New Colorado well here. Uh, body's feeling good, you know. A little, little beat up from the last one I was at two weeks ago, but, you know. Having tested his skills against some of the finest competitors in our sport, the question arises, can he make the leap and hold his own against the upper echelon of grapplers? You know, ready to put out a great performance today. You know, it's fantastic getting the opportunity to do this rule set more often, so I'm gonna take advantage of this as often as I can. You gotta wonder how John Combs is feeling out there. A lot of pressure, or is he feeling loose, calm, relaxed? Combs cuts through the guard. Combs is on his guillotine. This is his move. And this is where Combs is so dangerous. guard the first couple and then uh, hunt for guillotines and back takes bro that's what I'm here for Combs has a grinding top game John Combs is a back hunter. What 
you think about your division coming up? Yeah, you're always, yeah. You're always ending up in the first Yeah, game. yeah, I know, man. Yeah, I got uh, a couple tough matches in the first round, and then uh, assuming I do well in those, I got Davis, who uh, you know I'm really looking forward to go up against. That guy really, I think he shocked a lot of people back at the uh, Caves Coast and Mesa Open when he ran through that division. The last few months have really been the story of Davis Asari. He's exploded onto the scene. Just a couple of months ago, he was a purple belt in Norway, and now he's training out at New Wave under John Donaher, training with Gordon Ryan every day. Every single day, Davis Asari is training with amazing athletes such as the jiu-jitsu giant Big Dan Manasel and teenage prodigy Helena Craver, both of which had captured double gold at the ADCC Opens. The question remains, is Davis Asari going to be the next new wave athlete to capture double gold? Yeah, I mean, that was probably, like, everybody thought the toughest division at the tournament. And Davis, I mean, people kind of know who he is because of the team he's on and everything, yeah. but uh, wasn't picked by anybody to win that division. Yeah. What, what do you think about Davis? Uh, I think he's one. Thank you, Seth. Uh, I think he's one of the hottest young upcomers in the game, man. I mean, I looked at his Instagram. He got third at Purple Belt Worlds just a few months ago, and now, you know, after four months training with John, he's smashing some of the best competitors in the world here, man. To win gold at Denver, Davis has to do something spectacular. He has to get through the likes of John Combs, Elijah Carlton, and his own teammate, Oliver Tarza. What did we have for dinner last night to refuel? <laughs> dinner? <laughs> burritos? Uh, no. Yeah, actually it was. I ate burritos, so... There's a really good place here called Renegade Burritos in Denver, so you guys should check it out. It's a really good burrito. It's not Jack in the Box this time, but I would not mind to have Jack in the Box as a sponsor for sure. <laughs> How are you doing, bro? You doing good? I've been good. I've been um, trying to fix some mistakes uh, since the last open, so uh, hopefully I can get 100% submission rate, win the whole thing. That's the plan. Uh, you probably expect something or see something similar to um, uh, what you saw last time, I'll try to stay on top. Maybe the first match I'll pull guard just to get the nerves out, to just control the pace a little bit, but the plan is to stay on top, take people down, pass, and submit them, so for sure. Davis is so dangerous on the back. Everybody from New Wave is dangerous on the back. Davis is comfortable wrestling but he's also comfortable playing his guard. When he gets to the double unders, any kind of grip, he's so sticky. You have to wonder if the pressure of being the reigning ADCC Open champion is going to get to the young man. Or if that pressure is exactly what he needs to shine. and now a crucial rematch between Davis Asari and John Combs. The last time they met, Davis won via straight ankle lock. So here's the question, will Davis repeat history and cement himself as the number one grappler at the ADCC Opens? Or will Combs tie up the score and prove that anyone can win on any given day? Davis has his hands full with John Combs. Combs has been around a long time, Davis new to the scene, but he's just running through people. Oh 
Both these guys are very competent leg lockers. period tends to be where the more experienced grappler really shines and right away John Combs passing the guard throwing his leg over into a beautiful triangle that was just unbelievable that was an incredible play by John Combs Nice work. Nice skin fought well this week. <laughs> oh, man. That was awesome. Not surprised at all. You looked up like you didn't know you're the man. You are the man. Good job. That felt good. How did that? No, no, yeah. You've got a whole range of skill levels. You gotta stay on top of the game as best you can, you know? Mix things up too, man. This is a chance to try new things. Like uh, I've never been a leg locker and shoot, I won that match before at the heel hook. Never done that before. And then this one, I got out of a bad spot by threatening with a leg lock. So I think this is an opportunity to open your game up. I mean, who cares really what happens to these things, man? This is just about growth and development. You know, I'm sure Dave is going to come back from this way stronger and, you know, looking for some payback. So, you know, I'm here for it. I just want to keep competing as much as I can, grow as much as I can. I love jujitsu. It's my favorite goddamn thing on this whole planet. I just want to keep doing as much of it as I can. Man, just stick with it. Like, you know, I, people look at me as if I've been, like, very successful. I've had a few days where things have gone really well, but shoot, man, you know, out of probably the 50 times I've competed, 45 of them have sucked. It really sucked. And that's most of it, man. Not of Gordon Ryan and, you know, all those top guys. That's few and far between, man. Most of us, you know, we have hard days. And you just keep pushing through those, man. You know, days like today are built by the days that suck, man. Davis suffers his first loss at the Opens. Just like that. Chance at gold gone. On the other side of the bracket, we have his teammate Oliver Tarza. You know what? Towards the end of of last uh, comp last competition, I was working a lot on two on ones into the legs. So you're going to be seeing me attack a lot more submissions, especially in the beginning. Uh, no points period. You're going to see me attacking a lot the legs, transitioning to the back, arm bars, kimuras, all the good stuff, and then uh, of course initiate, keep the action going, keep pushing the pace. It's short matches, so you start, you go. Taza probably has one of the most beautiful and elegant leg games in all of jiu-jitsu. His hands are full here though, the 10th Planet Atlanta product, Kevin Buren. Taza's probably the most experienced person in this bracket. This one up always sucks, man. Having such an educated guard really makes Taza comfortable anywhere he goes. Trying to pressure Taza is almost a mistake because his guard 
is so good. He's got dangerous guillotines, dangerous leg locks, tosses the total package. How did he not finish that guillotine? Look how effortlessly he moves underneath people. I just think Taz is one of the best in the world at that. He's had a ton of good attacks this match. Just can't get anything to stick. There's his move. He does that better than anybody in the world. I think he's just got the most beautiful entry. After a dominant run of submission victories, Taza punches his way to the finals. The always formidable Elijah Carlton, a product of 10 Planet Atlanta, poses a significant threat to the throne. Here's the thing about Elijah's guard. He's baiting you by acting so lazy. That's Elijah's move. He calls it the jabroni spin. He enters from the side, laces through the 50-50. Listen, even from the guarded position, you have to move forward. Don't just sit and lay. I'm telling you, it's going to be advantageous. I was moving forward. No, 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 he was I'm, I'm, listen, I'm benefiting you, right? I'm trying to benefit you. If you sit in your guard, move forward. Don't just stay there, because you're just, it's the same with him not moving forward as you sitting forward. You just have to both move forward, okay? It's gonna be the same outcome. Every <laughs> time. Awesome job, guys. Awesome job. Davis looks to keep his chances at a medal alive as he takes on the very dangerous Elijah Carlton. Elijah's got a chip on his shoulder. When you come out of the 10th Planet Atlanta camp with Sean Applegate, you're gonna be a leg locking machine. Elijah embraces the heel character as much as anybody I can think of in jujitsu. Let's go, dude. Congratulations. All right, this 
This 86 bracket with 83, 83 bracket, absolutely nuts. Elijah Carlton just taking out Davis Asari, absolutely nuts. He'll be in the finals. With that win, Elijah Carlton secures his place in the finals. But to take gold, he's going to have to take out Oliver Taza, the teammate of Davis Asari. Both of these guys definitely understand how dangerous the other athlete is. Elijah submitted all of his opponents on the way into the finals. Just making some good entries. He gets to the back on Taza. Two to two, with a minute left on the clock. Thirty seconds, face each other. Time, go. Will Taza's experience be able to pull it out here at the end? Oliver Todd's a big win for you today. Maybe the toughest division in the tournament. Let's talk about your, your run to gold here. It was a good day, man. I'm happy with the way I performed. Um, obviously, the goal is always to submit all my opponents. They had uh, one guy from 10th Planet, super hard to submit. And the finals, Elijah Carlton. He's very dangerous on the legs. He's a little bit bigger than me, so I had to play the rules a little bit more than I would like to, but that's what we do these men. It's perfect practice for trials. Perfect rule set, perfect setting environment. So I'm very happy with, the, with this day, yeah. So uh, you were the favorite probably in this division at Costa Mesa at the Orange County Open. You went down, you got upset. Your teammate Davis went, went to win that division. Today Davis got tapped by the guy you fought in the final. Let's talk about coming back, that, having that guy tap Davis and then you going to beat Elijah in the final. You know what, that always play with your with your mindset going into the match because actually I won by a negative. He did a little mistake, Elijah, in the finals. And uh, when things like that happen, I overcommit to like the threat that my, my Davis told me. So he's dangerous on the legs, I overcommitted and let him get up on the rear body lock. So things like that, you know, it's, it's, it just will help me in the future and not let these things get in my head and just focus on what I'm capable of doing. So it's good. I'm happy that I got to avenge uh, Davis. Uh, he did the same for me last week and uh, our trials will be the same thing. It'll be him or me. So, I mean, you're getting more and more. I mean, you're a veteran. You're not an ACC Rules three times, but people do this for a decade and don't quite, quite grasp ACC Rules. The more and more you're doing, like, do you think going and doing the Orange County Open, coming today, are you learning more and more that's, that's helping you turn that corner? 100%, man. The pace, the pace of those matches, the trials matches is different than the one at the Worlds. You know what I mean? So, like, 
First match, for example, I came out, first two minutes, pedal to the metal, full blast. And then right before points, you're kind of thinking where you want to be. Do you want to be on top? Do you want to be on bottom? You want to stabilize the position where you're likely to score after. So these things, with practice, you get better at doing them. So I highly recommend anybody who's trying to qualify for ADCC, do these opens. This, this is just the perfect prep. So, I mean, they're going to have the points ranking system and everything for these opens coming up. The next one, next month, is right up the street from you, Dallas, Texas. Is we going to be seeing you in Dallas? 100%. Dallas, Tijuana, up until trials. I'm going to be doing every single one of them. Awesome. Thank you very much, Albert. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. My name is Mo Jassum. I'm the head organizer of ADCC. So we're in the process of launching 45 ADCC events over four countries in the next two years. So make sure to subscribe and watch and follow the journey as we put all of this together until ADCC 2024.